Hey guys, today I've got something a little different because I needed to take a little break from F122. Today, as you probably know from the title, I'm going to give the MotoGP 22 game a go. This game released on Game Pass, but funny story, I actually purchased this game on Monday just gone before I even knew it was coming to Game Pass. So yeah, I spent some money there that I didn't actually need to, but hey ho, at least it supports the developers. But I'm playing this as I've never really been a huge MotoGP fan. In fact, I've not played a MotoGP game or even watched a full race since the old days of Valentino Rossi, Danny Pedrosa and Jorge Lorenzo. So it's been a fair few years. And other than Marc Marquez, I really don't know any of the current riders. But I'm going to Silverstone in a few weeks to watch the British MotoGP race. So I thought I'd better brush up on my knowledge and what better way to do that than to absolutely fail at playing MotoGP 22. The one good thing about purchasing the game a few days ago is that I've been able to have a couple of days with the game. So I've gone from having the skill set of a three year old child and falling at every corner to now having at least a base level of competence. Don't worry, I'm still shockingly bad at this game and I'll almost certainly crash multiple times in this video, especially as I'm running the game with all assists off and manual gears because, well, that's how we roll around here. But let's start by choosing a rider and a track and as I mentioned, I really don't know any of these riders. I'm going to be picking a bike that I think looks cool rather than based on performance level or any type of fandom. And on that note, if you guys have any suggestions for who I should be supporting at the British MotoGP race in a few weeks time, let me know in the comments below. I'll almost certainly purchase some overpriced merch during the weekend, so give me the inside scoop now on what teams and riders I should be looking out for. For this race, I'm going to opt for the bright orange KTM because, well, it looks pretty darn cool especially with those crazy aero winglets at the front. For the track, I was going to choose Silverstone as it's coming up soon, but I've driven that track day in, day out over the past few weeks, so I'll go with a track that isn't on the F1 calendar. I played a little bit of the Saxon ring the other day, and it seems like a fun flowing track, so I'll go with that. The race options, I'm going for a 25% race, with the AI difficulty set to 57%. As I said, I'm pretty hopeless at this game, and 57% seems to be where my current skill set is. Rewind is definitely on, as I'll be 100% needing that, and I've got the curve indicators on just so I know when to brake for now. For the drive raids, I've got everything disabled or set to manual other than the ride height device, as I always keep forgetting to activate it coming out of corners as I'm just so focused on not falling off. I'm going to go for a practice session to test out this bike on this track, then I'll do a quality session followed by the race. I'm probably going to skip straight to the quality for this video rather than show you my many fails and crashes that I'm likely to have during free practice. So on that note, let's jump straight into quality. Right guys, we're in pre-qualifying. I'm not really sure how the MotoGP quality works, but it says the two fastest riders go to Q2, which I think is the final part, sort of the final shootout. So I guess we'll just try our best to be top two in this, otherwise... We might be starting outside of the top 10 or top 15 or however, however that works. Um, but I've just applied a little bit of tweak to my setup um, just to remove a little bit of understeer because that's the, that's the part of the setup or that's the part of the bike that I always struggle to, to keep in control. I always struggle to get the front end turned in. Um, and then I'm going to go with some soft tyres front and back. Um, I, presume, I presume soft tyres are the tires of choice in quality just like they are in f1 so i'm going to go with that um and then let's have a look see who's on track at the moment i've got a few drive a few riders i'm going to keep saying drivers in this in this i'm so used to so used to cars and f1 uh, we've got a few riders on track already so let's let's head out and see what we can do So actually on track for the first time, I did do quite a bit of running in practice just to just to stop falling off every single corner. Um, and as I say that first corner, there we go, we're off. That's a that's a great start. That's a, a good precedent for how we're going to proceed in this. But I'll try not to I'll try not to fall off too much. That's the aim of this. I want to hopefully get out of Q1, maybe be competitive in the race. Um, and not fall off too much that's my that's my goal so this has not been the great start because this is going to hamper our first lap and we slow down here although 
although we might only lose a couple of tenths from that. I don't know how how lacking in grip our um, our tyres are going to be now, thanks to off. But we run incredibly wide into T1, but I'm not the only one. The rider in front did the exact same thing, although he went a little bit further off track. Um, I lowered tra all of the aids a little bit, traction control, anti-wheelie and engine braking down a little bit. Um, I had to have a little bit more kind of feel. I think with all those set to five, the bike feels kind of very robotic. And there we go again. That's another another off. So that's two in half a lap. That's good going so far. Um, I'm going to try not to use the rewinds. There we go. I'm going to try not to use the rewind too much. Um, if we come off during the race, I think I probably will use rewind just so we don't drop to the back so we can still be competitive. But I'm going to try to avoid it to sort of where I can. So let's just focus on finishing this lap and sort of not crashing again. This isn't going to be a competitive lap in the slightest, sort of first lap out. I've got to re acclimatize myself. It's the first time I've run on soft tyres as well. In the practice session, I was running medium tyres, I believe. Um, so we'll see how these soft tyres differ. Um, I guess I need to warm up a little bit. But I've noticed you cannot touch the kerbs at all on the inside. If you if you go over the inside kerb, it's almost guaranteed that you're going to fall off in this game. Um, all of my knowledge that I've learned from from the F1 games and other sim racing games are are completely out the window here. This is as you can see, I get a big wheelie there. Really struggled to slow it down, especially into T1 there where you've got the heavy braking zone. And with all of the assists off as well, if you slam the brakes on, you are going over the top of the handlebars. You, as you see, I've got sort of a, a bit of a stoppy there with the, the rear wheel lifting off the track. And that will be a, a running theme, I'd imagine, into turn one um, as I try to slow it down. You've got to really modulate the brake pressure. As you see, I get a bit wild over the inside curve there. If you go over the inside, you need to just try and sit up straight on the bike and not apply any throttle or brake, otherwise you are, are going down. So this, get past this rider here we're two tenths just under two tenths up so far this sequence of corners here i find incredibly fun very hard to get right because you're constantly leaning um, and it's just a a game of playing with the throttle to see sort of how far you sort of run out wide but we're six tenths up already on our first run which is good as i said the aim here is to get out of this pre quali session or of Q1 session, um, it said top two go through, so that's my aim here. Top two, um, eight tenths up. So, this that looks like a solid run. I have no idea if that's fast or not at 122.8. Um, get a huge wheelie there, huge wheelie, and off wide we go. And that is into the wall, yep, into the wall. And that would be very painful in real life, but I think I'm going to end. End that run there, return to the pits. I don't know if I'd have had enough fuel for another run anyway. I think you only really get two, maybe three runs with the base level of fuel in. Um, so I might have been pushing it a bit there, but let's... Oh, we've got sustained damage. Three minutes, 14 to repair it. Yeah, I'm not surprised going headfirst into a wall like that. But let's see where we're sitting. We're currently... We are P2. Okay, so that's... We're in the danger zone. We're at risk there if we... I think we need to improve on that a little bit. Let's put some new soft tyres on again. Um, I'll lower the fuel a bit because I don't think we're going to have enough running time for more than one lap here. Three minutes to go. Minute and a half for an out lap. We might just get two laps in. But let's go out and see. I think we do need to improve. So, first lap here. Again, just absolutely struggling to slow that that the bike down into that first corner. That was quite a good line there. You've got a late apex on T1, and then you've got this kind of double apex left hander, and then this sort of long, long sweeping right, which run out wide there it is probably quite a good line. Um, and then clip the apex, you come back in, but that was that was too wide and too scruffy. And then I'm running wide again there on the curbs. That isn't ideal. Probably don't want to be that wide. Um, again, just pushing it out wide, have to break, not getting a good run through. I'm actually down on my lap time, two tenths down so far. Got to carry speed through this corner, which I find incredibly tricky to do. 
and then running extremely wide there. Oh, just about keeping it out of gravel, keeping the bike upright, but that's, we've lost this lap now. That's a second and a half down, and we're gonna have to abandon this lap. And I'll pick up the action on our second run. So cross the line with 10 seconds to go. Huge, huge little moment there. Bike getting all out of shape on the front wheel as I brake, but a good apex there. Sort of a late apex gives us a good run out. Have got a bike in front of us, which isn't ideal. I think I'm faster than these guys. Oh, uh, sorry, mate. Sorry again. And oh, damn it. Okay, we're down again. As I said, those inside curves, if you. If you ride over them, you just have to straighten the bike up. That's all you can do. So I'll sit up a little bit, try to avoid that curve that time. Let's compromise my exit, so that's not ideal. Um, but we just need to get around this purple bike here. We're incredibly wide. That, isn't, that wasn't ideal at all. But actually quite a good line. Get a little bit of a wheelie. That wasn't, wasn't ideal. And run down here. I always break a little early for this corner. I can never... I don't want to risk running out wide. You, you've got the gravel right there. A bit sloppy, and that's that's a corner cut, but we won't mention that. I mean, that's actually cost us time. We're we're down at our personal best. We're that incredibly wide. And then final two corners. I can break late into here, but that was a touch too late. Didn't get anywhere near the apex there. But we're two tenths up. Break a little early into the last corner. Lean the bike in. You have to lean so early. It's one of the big differences between this and sort of a car sort of simulator. And we've actually gone, oh, we've gone top, perfect. So we, how much were we top by? Three hundreds of a, of a second, that was, um, but I think our original time would have got us through. I don't think we would have been knocked out. So Q2. I presume this is, and I, I guess this is the shootout. It said Q1 and Q2, so I presume this is the shootout for pole. Um, I have to stick a fresh set of softs on. We're burning through these pretty quickly. And then, what have we got? How many, how many riders have we got in here? Right, okay. So out on a flying lap here. Let's see what we can do. Let's just try and put a decent first lap benchmark down. Try not to mess up the very last corner like I did on our first run in Q1. I just binned it off off of the track. That was that wasn't great, but that was better. At least it stayed on the track that time. So let's just focus on getting a clean lap. Got some bikes coming out of the pit, which isn't ideal. Don't really fancy. Following some bikes. Bit of an awkward apex there. And run incredibly wide through turns two and I presume turn three. Unless that corner is just all turn two. That was quite a nice line. Get the bike turned back over. Again, nice, nice line through there. Just following Quattaro Row. Quattaro. Excuse the pronunciation of the names. Like I said, I, my knowledge of most of the GP riders is incredibly limited. So I'll probably butcher a fair few names when it comes to the race and we're having bikes fly past us, or hopefully us flying past them, but that might be a bit hopeful thinking. There's quite a nice sequence there. I mean, I imagine this track is incredibly scary to ride in real life. Coming through that sequence there where you're just, you're leaning for about sort of 10 seconds, traveling sort of 150, 160 miles an hour, that'd be absolutely terrifying. Run incredibly wide through the last corner, oh, not ideal, but then we, what have we got, 22.4? So picking it up, the action again on my next run. We're currently seven tenths, eight tenths up. This is a much cleaner run through the first sequence of corners. Just a huge moment there on the inside curve. As I said, don't touch the inside curves. I actually went over the green sausage curve as well then, so we'll we'll bin that run, and we're currently P2. Okay, that is not bad at all. So P1, I don't know if the times improve much. Um, 
but some try some riders are on hard and medium tires so i'm not quite sure the the ideal strategy for a moto gp qualifying session i don't know if you need to start the race on the same set of tires you quali on i sincerely hope not otherwise we might be pitting during the race um but yeah riders on medium and hard tires that seems strange but we'll new set of softs and we'll pick up the action as I absolutely butcher my second to last run. We've got 40 seconds left in the session. So that's that run over with four seconds down. I've gone power mode one to preserve fuel and then I'm just gonna clean off these tires, get rid of that gravel that we, we just picked up, put it back to power mode three, approaching the last two corners and then just try and get a good launch out of the last corner. So we're currently P4, um, two tenths down from pole position, which would be absolutely amazing in our first race. So that was a decent exit, that was good. We've got power mode three, so let's just focus on stopping the bike. And that was, that was pretty smooth, we've got a bit, can a little bit of excess speed, but that's quite a good line actually, because look, you want to pinch back in, clip the apex, flip the bike over, I needed to be a little tighter then really. Bit sloppy through there. Flip the bike back again. I just I don't know the best combination of front and rear brake. Um, I don't know what the real kind of best strategy of utilising both brakes because you have to brake individually with the the rear brakes controlled by a face button on the controller and the front brake is controlled with the trigger. So I I always just hold the rear brake to kind of slide the rear out a little bit and get the the front turned in if you if you hold the front brake you you'll just understeer off of the track and that's the last run absolutely ruined so uh, we'll return to the pit see if anyone else improves and they haven't so we'll, we'll be starting p4 for the race that ain't bad that's not bad at all we, we had the potential to go p1 which means a win could be on here so we've got Banyaya taking pole, followed by Espargo and Marc Marquez. Miguel Oliveira, is he our teammate? I'm not quite sure. It says KTM, I know there's multiple KTM bikes. Um, but let's forward to the race. And that is Banyaya sitting on pole position. So I'll just go and change my tires. That's in consumption, isn't it? So I'm probably going to stick on some hard. I say medium is the ideal tire to be on, but I'm going to go a bit conservative and go hard, I think. I have no idea how these will wear during the race. And there we are, Remy Gardner, looking at camera, ready to go. <laughs> Blowing a cheeky little kiss there. And with that, we will we'll start the race. We've got Banier, Espargaro, Marquez, then behind us we've got Vignale. I don't really see who else was there, but let's start start the race. Try and get a good launch. We're row two here. So manual start, hold the clutch, give us some revs, and don't forget to shift up as I pull away, which I have done in the past. I was sat on the line, revving away and in neutral. So that was that was a decent start actually. Maintain P3, P4, and then we will. We get absolutely swallowed up by everybody. So let's just try and not bin it around these first few corners. Oh, that, I'm going to not take responsibility for that, I don't think. I think it was probably caused with the contact from my bike, but I didn't turn into him. Um, and we, oh god, dropped down to P14 currently. Let's try and keep it clean, tidy. Let's get through his first corner. Just trying not to hit anybody, I'm trying to avoid contact. We've got Dovi just up in front of us. So that's P13, let's try and clear some of these riders and incredibly wide and first crash of the race. Let's drop that back. I'm not going to use the uh, rewind function to cheese the race and kind of keep doing it to get a better position so I compromised my corner there anyway and off again wow crikey that was a um, that was a huge off let's 
I am going to just try and use the rewind if I need to to stay in the race because if I don't then I'll be dropped to the back of the pack and it won't be a very fun race but hopefully we won't need it too much. I'm feeling a little bit more confident on the bike after quali and it's just when you're not paying attention you don't get down leaning sort of soon enough you, you drift out wide uh, kick up a little wheelie there and I need to I think I need to manage my power my engine power as well through the race I think power mode 3 will burn through fuel so I need to drop down power modes and do a bit of fuel saving at some point during the race I need to sort of drift out wider through that last corner as well I always cut it too sort of fine and make the corner too tight up on the front wheel again as I said that would be a common theme I'd imagine through this race just trying to get the bike slowed down into that first corner Oi. Just try not to make contact with these guys there's my first track limit warning <laughs> it's getting a bit too eager on that inside curve and we've got Marquez one of the Marquez but not Mark just in front of us and we've got Brad Binder I think it's Brad So we're up into P9, I can still see the lead pack, which is good. It's getting all sorts of squirrely out around these corners. If you apply any throttle at all, you just see the rear of the bike just wobbling away because of the low traction. I've got traction control set down to two, so you get a little bit more freedom in the rear of the bike, which I quite like. You can apply the throttle pretty violently um, to sort of improve your you get away. So you can see a big sort of power slide there. So I applied the throttle a little bit too hard. Probably not good for tyre wear, but we've got these hard tyres on. I presume they'll last. Well, we've got eight laps. Um, to keep it tight here, let's try down the inside. No, slowing, it, slowing down a bit too much. A little nudge. That was friendly. That was okay. And then run down to the first corner. I think that's P7. So we are 1.8 in front. Eh, another big... A big stoppy and a little shunt from the back. I think I slowed down too much then. That'd be my key for if I'm slowing down too much into the corners, I'll get riders into the back of me. So that'll be my uh, motivation not to do that. Drift out wide, cut back to the inside, sit the bike up a little bit then, otherwise I'd have hit the curve, which cost me a bit of time. Again, just it's all about being smooth through these corners, and as you can see, I'm, I'm kind of jolting about a little bit. I haven't quite got the perfect smooth action down just yet but first race so hopefully over time if I persist with MotoGP 22 I'll, I'll improve this smoothness but look just look how long you're leaning for this must be absolutely intense for the riders for leaning down what we do 130 miles an hour with your shoulder on the floor pretty much it's down the inside I always break a little bit early for and a little bit late for um, that second to last corner. Seems to be able to carry a little bit more speed through there than some of the riders. And then break a touch early for like, this final corner just to get inside. And again, look, I'm not drifting out wide. I'm kind of pinching and straightening up a bit too early. I could carry a bit more speed out of the exit there. So, oh, you've got to be so careful with the brake pressure on that front brake. You see, I had to release brake pressure there, which made me go out wide. Um, you can't, if you apply too much brake too early, it'll sort of lift your rear wheel. If you apply too much brake pressure when you're slow, oi, and we're down. Down again. Just got pinched on the inside of that corner there. I think I made a little bit of contact, we can't be really low. There we go. Again, I kind of compromised my exit there with that rewind, so it's not like I'm cheese in the game too much but we're right in this battle now for probably sort of fourth fifth sixth place but i can see the lead guys so i feel like we're in the hunt for the win here we've got the pace as long as we can get the bike upright so that corner there i'll break a little early for I, can't, I can never seem to get the right line so i'd rather be a little bit safe but then i went down run a little bit wide off the throttle when you're touching sort of not on the track surface when you're off the surface you lift off the throttle otherwise you're you're going down wide again but that looks like p4 currently what we got we're halfway through the race p4 so kind of back to where we started <laughs> we've made almost zero progress despite overtaking half the field due to our bad bad start 
Got a little cheeky move up the inside there. That's quite nice. The P3. Our tyres, then not wearing too bad. Sort of about half worn on that inside left where you're just leaning so heavily around that second half of the lap. The front guys drifted up very wide there, but yeah, sort of not making the apex there. That's a, a strange line. You'll see the bike sort of squirming and moving all over the place. That's why I'm just playing with the brake sort of front and back brakes. Applying a little bit of brake mid corner, it kind of just upsets the balance of the bike, which makes it squirm a little bit like that. But I feel like I need to hit that rear brake a touch just to get the front end turned in a little bit. Again, probably not the ideal braking technique as we clip Banyeo a little bit on his rear wheel. Get a little bit wide through there, but not too not too bad. And puts us on the wrong line there though. So we come through this really fast section, which I really enjoy. Got to lift up there, otherwise we we're gonna sort of probably have a big accident. And then I had to lift a little bit into that corner, otherwise again I would have collected Banyeo as I came through. But look how much we can carry so much more speed through that second to last corner than the AI. And then on the last corner itself. They're probably a touch faster than us. Although that was a good line. Drift out wide so they're not pinching the corner as much as we were in the first few laps. So I think we're learning. But always break early into P into turn one there. Again, rear wheel came up a little bit. Front guys front guys go very wide there, but we got second place. Thanks to Banya sort of running incredibly wide. I think we might just have. And I think he might have given him the finger there. He wasn't, I, like I wasn't very happy about that. Sort of waving him off a little bit, but that was quite neat and tidy. Despite the bike wobbling all over the place, but the line itself wasn't too bad through there. Could drift a little bit wider. But you have to be so early with your, um, with your steering inputs. You have to lean so early, and if you lean too early into a corner, you... You won't run out wide as much. You have to play with the throttle to sort of drift the car, drift the drift the car, drift the bike sort of back out wide. And it really is a kind of balancing game with the brake throttle and how much you're leaning. It's completely different to any sort of other sim racing title, which to be expected. Um, and I have to say, I'm quite enjoying it. It's quite a smooth flowing game once you sort of get the your rhythm. When I first jumped in, I I couldn't make it around a single corner. Um, but when you get a little, what, a little, nice little cutback there, try to do the, the little inside move, lay it up and under, didn't quite work. What are we second to last lap here? So the bike down, there we go. Kind of getting the braking a bit better into turn one. Went out a little bit wide, but we didn't lift the rear wheel there, I don't think. As you can see, I'm just playing with the power mode as well. I'm keeping it in power mode two for the second to last lap, then I'm going to bump it out to power mode three for the last lap. We've got it says plus 1.4 on fuel remaining. I don't know if that means it's one and a half laps remaining or if it means we're plus one on our delta, which means we have an extra lap of fuel to play with, but I don't really want to risk it by increasing the power mode just yet. Just in case we do run out of fuel, that'd be embarrassing. Get incredibly wide on the entry there. Just keep out of gravel. We actually were braking on the curve. That's lucky we didn't go over then. Again, incredibly wide, just try and carry speed through there. Can we get just down the inside here? We can. Quite a cheeky little move. Just down the inside, run a little bit wide, and then slow the bike down. And that was a terrible line through there. <laughs> I lifted, I released a bit of steering input there, I don't know why. And then slow it down into the last corner, we've got one lap to go. Just bring it home now is all we, all we need to do. We've got the lead, got a quarter of a second over the guy in second place. Get the bike slowed down to turn one. This is the hardest challenge, running incredibly wide there. But that is probably the hardest corner on the track to slow the bike down. So we're still in the lead. Hopefully, as long as we keep it smooth through this last lap, let's try and put in a, a belter lap as well. Let's put in a really good last lap, get fastest lap of the race here. We're, Three tenths up, keeping it smooth. Quite a nice line through there. Keep the bike down. That was probably the best we've taken this sequence of corners so far. Just 
play with the throttle application through there. Look at that, we're second up on our best delta already. So this has got to be fast lap of the race. Although that was a little bit sloppy, that wasn't the best line. Keep my leans a bit wide. That was a bit, a bit touch and go. Drop the bike back over, good line through, through there. Towards the second to last corner, we're second up on our, our fastest lap so far. You can see we, we're definitely improving, even across the space of this span of this um, single race and where we were in the, the first few laps and that was incredibly wide. Imagine binning it in the last corner and a little wheelie across the line and, and I said a little wheelie, that was probably a bit too much. I wasn't trying to do that. Remy, you, you didn't need to do those dramatics over line, but look at that, we take our first win. Looking at the results, we finished over a second ahead of Quattararo and our fastest lap was actually around a second faster than the others as well. So I think next race I'll need to bump up the difficulty a little bit. But let's take the podium now and watch these celebrations. I did really enjoy that race, my whole MotoGP 22 experience. But let me know what you thought in the comments below. Did you enjoy this style of video? And would you like to see more MotoGP content on this channel in the future? Also, let me know which riders are your favorite and why, so I can find someone to cheer on at Silverstone in a few weeks. I want to say a huge thanks to everyone who subscribed to our channel and got us past the 40,000 subscriber mark. That is pretty crazy if you ask me, so thank you everybody. And if you haven't subscribed just yet, but like what you see, hit that subscribe button. But for now guys, I'm going to head back to F122 to work on some more videos and content for you guys, and I'll see you all on track.